practices every day. It was playing for the junior terriers, living on the Cape. It was a bit of a commitment. But, right. Uh, it, yeah, it just showed me everything else that was out there, all the other players and the different leagues. And it really, that's where I started to put in the work in and realize that there's always somebody better. There's always more opportunities. And from that, I made a lot of good friends. Uh, a lot of lifelong friends and uh, yes yeah, still play against some of the guys that I used to play against them uh -huh. and, and just you know a lot of people talk to me about the, the com you just said it a little there the competition that yeah. you would face there and just the, the level that's raised in those games I mean yeah. they said it was like every weekend oh yeah it was, it was intense was, games right yeah exactly and uh, for my for the 87 level it was always us versus the Islanders uh, we lost four years in a row to them in the finals oh. and it was just heartbreakers but they, uh, they ended up going on to win that Quebec Junior Tournament. So we felt a little good about that, but it was still, we just always knew that they were the best team and uh, we'd get them every once in a while, but um, they just had a powerhouse and we had some good players, but at that age too, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's a lot of coaching. It's a lot of commitment because right. guys have different commitments going on and that league really made you focus on hockey and kind of choose it as a path. Who was your uh, coach then? Barry Armstrong. Okay. Yeah, him and my father and uh, Jason Lawrence's father. He played over at BU. Nice. And did you always know you were going to be a defenseman or had you started forward? At that, at that age, I was defense. Uh -huh. um, when I was starting out, I was forward. Probably okay. from five to nine-ish, uh -huh. I was forward. And then I think my father just threw me on D. He was a defenseman growing up, so I liked it back there. A little more time with the puck. And had the had the pro game, like I'm sure you pay attention to the pro teams as you're playing. Then had that shift to more puck moving D that we see now. I mean, everyone wants one of those. Had that started yet, or and if so, had it sort of trickled down to your level? Yes and no. There was always the Niedermeyers, the you know the guys you could just skate with. Right. Brian Leach was a hometown hero for us, yeah. and guys like that. But overall. It was still more of a steady defensive game and guys more like Ray Bork who could kind of do everything out there, play the tough physical game on the back end, but contribute offensively. So it definitely was creeping in, but I think after the first lockout is when it really took a big shift right. towards the puck moving defense. And where were you at that low at that time? Uh, 04, I was at Nobles. Okay. So, so kids were starting to see that. I mean, was, oh, it, yeah, was yeah. the coaching starting to change at that point too? Yeah, um, yeah, they definitely just encourage defense to be more active in the play. Jump in. Be, yeah, be around the offensive net uh -huh. more. I mean, you had definitely had your responsibilities to cover the net, your own net, but um, yeah, it was it wasn't time for guys just to block shots anymore. You had to contribute as well. So yeah, and nowadays that's everything. You know, you got to be good at both ends, forwards and deep. Right. We were just talking before we started the camera here about the Corey Griffin happy hour they just had. Yeah. How cool is it to see? all the the lums back in one place and, and how many of them have made it onto the pro level i mean what's that like for you yeah it's uh it's pretty surreal there's a good number of us that started playing together when we were 14 15 and they're still playing now we still train together in the summers and Corey was always a part of that mm -hmm. and uh, his younger brother mikey as well and the father rob is kind of the one who brought us all together and really made sure that we all got the training the the ice times brought us the tournaments, and he was a big catalyst for all that. And yeah, I mean, all of us owe a great gratitude to that whole family. And uh, it's a terrible tragedy, but um, they're doing a great thing in his name. For sure. And finally, how does it feel to be back here with the chance to maybe play for a team you, you grew up watching? Yeah, it's, uh, again, it's pretty surreal. Uh, I mean, I've driven by this place a million times on the Mass Pike, but uh -huh. never been in it. So it's uh, that alone just kind of putting on the jersey and different things it's it's definitely pretty crazy i know there was there was uh you know some rumors that maybe uh when peter chiarelli was here he was he was looking at you he kind of wanted to get you on the bruins and then you end up going to edmonton for a yeah. little i mean but what did that feel like just to know that the home team was interested in you and now again they got that interest yeah i mean it's always it's great but it's also a little tough because you know it's it's a little closer to home it's more people are seeing it, more right. your family, your friends, everybody's kind of <laughs> knowing everything you're doing at all times. But I think I'm at a point in my life now that it's, uh, it's an honor. It's, yeah. it's one of those to be able to be on Nesson, be 
you know, in the globe, that type of stuff. It's just everything I grew up reading, watching, so it's, it's pretty awesome. Awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you.